walked up next to me, and I'm like, oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> Here I am, 5'6", and he's got his 12-inch uh, platforms on, like. I'll never forget the first thing my brother asked him was, how do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> Gene shows up, and he goes, um, do you guys have a record deal? Do you have a manager? We're going, no. What's a manager? What's a record deal? I found Van Halen playing at a club in Los Angeles, flew them to New York, and produced about 15 songs, uh, the tape of which I still have. And then within six months of that, they uh, got signed to Warner's and everything was fine. You see a man feels like with music so thin you feel like you're wearing nothing at all. <laughs> picture myself as the ring leader here, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm Toastmaster General of the Immoral Majority, you know? Our motto is, ah, shut up. Like it or not, Dave's attitude, combined with Eddie's blistering guitar riffs, left a powerful impact on music. My first impression of Van Halen was that David Lee Roth was a god and that so was Eddie. Van Halen were amazing, but they showed you that you could be technically proficient and energetic and showy all in one. Along comes Eddie Van Halen, smiling, sliding, spinning, flying, and reinventing the guitar. Well, it, well at the time, I mean, his finger tapping, nobody really was really doing it, and then everybody started doing it, and it became a... But Eddie kind of put that on the map, didn't he? Van Halen represents... To me, purist in, in the realm of rock. Matt was some of the most genius hard rock. Talk about the sound, the tunes, and the show. It's a 10. It was a stellar production, as David Lee would say. Take the television, place it against your body, feel the sound of my voice. I'm Diamond David Lee Roth. Selling a truckload of records was nothing new for Van Halen, but this time they backed up their massively popular music with three vibrant, explosive, and, well, zany videos that poked the MTV generation right between the eyes. This is also one of the great 80s videos that partakes of the heavy metal logic that says, I am in a rock band. I do not have to have a day job. And I will celebrate this fact by wearing clothes that are mostly made of brightly colored tatters. I was the one who directed and created all the classic Van Halen videos. You know, Hot for Teacher, I Did Jump Panama, and so forth. I ain't the worst that you see. The winner is Eddie Michael Van Halen Roth Van Halen Jump. And I tell you, when Van Halen started all this stuff, you know, we had no idea where we were going and no idea whatsoever how it would all just snowball. Coming up, a sudden exit. 
Did I leave Van Halen, or did they ask me to leave? A sudden replacement. Then we said, oh, uh, nothing needs to be said. Let's do it. And some famous last words. I can't see any reason for this band to burn out, because we don't do anything that would burn us out. Ahead on the Sammy and Dave show, Life After Van Halen. Dave and I are not friends. We're nothing alike. I am the voice of Van Halen. <laughs> By the mid-80s, Van Halen was one of the biggest bands in the world. They sold millions of albums, they toured the world several times over, their singer made the cover of Rolling Stone, and every high school stoner in America had the VH symbol scrawled on the front of their science notebook. Around the same time, Sammy Hagar, the former lead singer of San Francisco rock band Montrose, was now selling millions as a solo artist. Hi, this is Red Rocker Sammy Hagar in black and white. <laughs> The concept for 55 I actually wrote myself. I wrote the video out. And originally, no one wanted to do that song. They didn't think it'd be a single. They didn't think it would ever be a video. I know. They finally went for it, and I just think it's fantastic. I think it's got my personality in it. It's got my car in it. You know, it's got my band in it. you only chose to do four songs and i told him before i says look any record that you're gonna go buy is only gonna have three or four good cuts on it to begin with right so all i did is trim off the flab and sell it to you for less I think that all depends basically on which magazine, which interview with Edward Van Halen that you're reading at the time. At one point, it sounded good to him to say that they had fired me, that they had thrown me out of the band because they had wanted somebody else to sing at any time. The audience didn't buy that one so good, so a few issues later, we read that Dave, because of his huge ego, he split on his own. He treated everybody like a little lower than him, including us in the band. And, you know, that's, that's not the way a band works. You know, we've worked with a guy for 11 years, so to speak, and he just kind of, like, walked, took off. I think there's a lot of dishonesty going on here, and that's a big part of the reason that I left Van Halen. In a funny way, it worked out for the better. Life goes on without me, cause I... Bitching memories of everything that happened in Van Halen when I was in the band, leading up to right about the last three months of our existence together. And then it wasn't so wonderful for me, so I failed in true American fashion. There's nobody who can take my place in that band. There may be one or two who will try and make the effort, just as there will always be champions. There will always only be one, Ollie. I'm the fun in Van Halen. I always will be the fun in Van Halen. Sit down, Waldo. And I am. You know, in terms of even thinking that somebody else might actually be able to take the place there, you know, you're welcome to keep trying. It is not. Officially, 51 52! So is it official with the group now? Totally. Yes. yes. What? Completely. He passed the audition. Exactly. This is the actual <laughs> version of Van Halen. The other one was just a kind of a tester model, so to speak. When 
one day my Lamborghini broke down and I ended up at Claudio's. And we had a mutual mechanic, a Claudio. And Claudio goes, Ed, you seem a little depressed. You know, and I go, yeah, man, I'm bummed. The singer just took off. And, uh, and he goes, hey, why don't you call Sammy? I just talked to Sammy. Why don't you call Sammy? So I said, give me his number, man. I called him right there from his shop. Eddie called me right from Claudio's. I mean, called me right from the joint. He was picking up his car, I guess, and my car was there. And he went, hey, who's Boxers? Oh, it's Sammy Agar. So you should get him in the band. Man, he said, what's his number? <laughs> you know? So I went down, we talked, and we talked for about five minutes, and we ended up playing music. You know, his brother was there, Alex and, and Michael. And uh, we just started blowing. And I want to tell you, it was so hot. We blew for about eight hours, and then we said, oh, uh, Nothing needs to be said. Let's do it. Just that I've been Sammy Hagar for a long time. I don't need to go out and go on tour and say, I don't need to do anything. I, I want to do everything I do for fun. This was more exciting to me to be in Van Halen than to go out and do another Sammy Hagar tour right now. This is serious stuff. This is serious band. Eddie is the best guitar player, rock and roll guitar player in the world. Van Halen is a very special band. We are very special together, you know, and uh, that's, a, that's a whole there is. You can't, you can't, there's nothing more than that. When it's magic, there's nothing more than that. While Sammy and Van Halen wallowed in the bliss of their new musical romance, Sammy and Dave put up their dukes. <laughs> Sammy Hagar is upset with me because he knows I'm better than he is. I don't have an ego problem because I've been Sammy Hagar and I don't have to go out there and try to you know, show everybody that I'm a big star. You said this about me and then I said no, you said it first. It's gonna go back and forth and it reads like wrestling, man. It reads like Hulk Hogan, you know, and it's colorful. Here we go around, 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 around. I can't see any reason for this band to burn out because we don't do anything that would burn us out. Coming up, Diamond Dave eats them and smiles. I'm ready, ready as anybody can be. I'm ready for you, hope you're ready for me. Van Halen gives two more singers the ejector seat. We had a big yelling match and it's like, well, if I ever see you, I'm gonna kick your ass and I hung the phone up. And the greatest comeback that almost was. This is the first time that we've actually stood on stage together in over a decade. If we would have started in Toledo, we would have never even made it to Cleveland. Ahead on the Sammy and Dave show, Life After Van Halen. I'm ready, ready as anybody can be. I'm ready for you. I hope you're ready for me. You know, this is my show, man. This is, we're ready. Ooh, we're ready. To, we got extra seats. Don't get me wrong. After six multi-platinum albums, seven top 40 hits, several pairs of assless pants, an ocean of Aquanet, and enough Jack Daniels to paralyze a herd of elephants, the David Lee Roth Van Halen dynasty came to an end in 1985. While the band got to work on a new album with new frontman Sammy Hagar, Dave kicked his bombastic solo career into high gear. Give me a bottle of anything and a glazed donut to go. The first thing and the last thing and the only thing that was always and is on my mind is I'm gonna make a rock and roll band. We got into the studio pretty soon when I got together with Stevie Vai, you know, Billy Sheehan and Greg, and uh, that's what we're doing right here, man. Eat them and smile time. I wanted to be legitimate with the fans. I wanted to be honest with my music. I wanted to go on the road for a long period of time. And I didn't want to do just two months on the road with uh, giant stadiums, charge everybody, same person who sits in the 900 seat, pays as much as a cat in the front row seat. 
That's not good for my kind of show. I don't play games so much with being on. I think that the music and what it means to people is way too important to take dead serious. I always told you with, with Van Halen that we're the people's band, that we, we were for the people. Well, I guess I still am. You know, I don't mean to put a certain person down, but it's like there's no more no more limits, no more governor, you know. It's like just we can do anything we want. And I think the music's better too. Uh, I think my writing's gotten a lot better because I'm not under the pressure of can I do this? Can I please can, I can do anything I want now. Fifty on Fifty being our first album that we that we basically did completely by ourselves, and it going number one, of course, is a, an incredible feeling. You know, very satisfying. <laughs> the chemistry is incredible. For us. I mean, it's what incredible. You, you got it. With Sammy on the mic, Van Halen was bigger than ever. But suddenly, in 1996, the Hagar bubble burst. I was called by Eddie on Father's Day morning. He just called up and says, uh, hey, we gotta talk, we gotta talk. And Eddie just goes, you know, you really frustrate me, you never do anything I asked you to do. And he goes, and, and you've always been a solo artist anyway, you might as well just go back to being a solo artist. Quote, unquote, exactly that. And I went, wow. I mean, I was floored. Bottom line, his work ethic sucked. He went home and didn't want to play the way the rest of the team wanted to play. I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but he put out a press release saying, I quit. A week later, he says I kicked him out. Now, you sticking the bull story, Sam? I'll take a lie detector test. I'm serious. I'm Kurt Loder with MTV News. This just in, Sammy Hagar is out as lead singer of Van Halen, and David Lee Roth, the man Hagar replaced in the group a decade ago, will apparently now be replacing him. Come on, baby, finish what you started. I definitely felt betrayed by them. The betrayal to me, not breaking up, it was them getting Roth back behind the back. Ed and Al and Mike hated that guy so bad. If you even brought his name up, these guys jumped up and went crazy. You know, I was in that band for 11 years. David Lee Roth was in it. Period. Having now officially survived their own rock and roll version of the Dick York, Dick Sargent debacle, it's Van Halen. September 4th, 1996. After recording two songs together for Best of Volume 1, Dave joins Van Halen on stage at the MTV Video Music Awards. We have to address this subject here. This is the first time that we've actually stood on stage together in over a decade. This is on stage antics, which for one I thought was embarrassing and I said December 16th I, I need a new hip okay 
But all of a sudden, Dave's vibe changed. I had to go to him. I go, Dave, what's the matter? What happened? So you know, you're just all happy and stuff, and now you're like you're pissed off and you know, whatever. And I go, he goes, well, hey, tonight's about me, man. I go, yeah. Tonight's about me. And I, from the bottom of my heart, really wanted to believe that he was a different guy and and just normal. And I tried really hard to be his friend, and I never lied to him about anything. You know, I don't know what kind of drugs he was on or what the hell is going on in his mind. For us to go back with Dave, but be going back, that's not growth. I think what's more important, or as important to remember, is that the fact that the 1984 Dave is a lot different than the 1996 Dave. And to have gone on tour with him would have not only embarrassed the band, it would have it insulted would have been ripping it would have the insulted band, the fa it would have insulted the audience. If we would have started in, in Toledo, we would have never even made it to Cleveland. You know how when I left, he came back in, but that was all just a hoax. That was just a big promotion for the greatest hits record, the Van Halen guys and, the, and that crooked manager they had. Uh, we're just trying to pull a coup on the fans, which backfired on them. Before the dust had a chance to settle on the Dave reunion fiasco, the Van Halen boys dropped another bomb. I'm Kurt Loder with an MTV News Brief. Although Van Halen management continues to be coy about confirming the rumor that Gary Sharon, former frontman for the Boston band Extreme, has been hired and is already rehearsing as Van Halen's new lead singer, over the weekend, guitarist Eddie Van Halen acknowledged that Sharon is, quote, 99.999% certain to have that job. And it wasn't, uh, it was a strange excitement. It wasn't like, all right, we got a singer. It was like, I don't know, just on a much deeper level. It was like a musical soulmate. record bombed and and uh, and Gary wanted to do it different he didn't want to be Eddie's puppet and Eddie you know threw him out up next Sammy's boozy new hobby Dave's bizarre home videos and the most inconceivable tour of the century Sammy and I are like fraternity brothers who've been through the same behazing Coming up on the Sammy and Dave Show, Life After Van Halen. Dave and I are not friends. We're nothing alike. I am the voice of Van Halen. Van Halen was unstoppable in the 80s and early 90s, cranking out eight top 20 hits, four number one albums, and a slew of unforgettable videos. But they just couldn't hold on to a singer. After losing both Sammy Hagar and Gary Sharon in just four years, the band slipped into rock and roll limbo. Meanwhile, after the initial success of platinum selling albums Crazy from the Heat, Eat 'em and Smile, and Skyscraper, original mouthpiece David Lee Roth saw his popularity start to sag. The spandex wardrobe and onstage kung fu aerobics that once won thunderous applause were now starting to produce yawns. Hello. This is Dave, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about life. And I'm coming to you for more points in between. A little louder.
Mr. Rock, you have anything you want to say to us about this? get a lower edge bust, a more cheap throwaway as far as a quote unquote drug bust goes. There's this poor detective standing up there with a plastic bag the size of a saddle blanket. And he's just a little piece of green in the corner like this. And he's going, oh yeah, we netted him. I, I know, I spent six and a half hours handcuffed next to a Jamaican named Tree because of his haircut. <laughs> And in a condo line answering questions, you know, to all the rest of the guys on the chain. You really Dave Rock? Yeah, yeah. But instead of letting himself bottom out completely, he launched a series of radical schemes designed to give his limp career a dose of Viagra. That's Dave. He's like the showman. He put his, his own money into that, and he, he whipped that salsa band into this, like, merciless shape. Just a jubilo, and everywhere I go, I talked to Dave one night, like in the 90s, and I said, Dave, I just saw the ad for the Vegas thing. I said, I gotta go see it. And he goes, I'll make sure there's a ticket waiting for you, Henry. I don't know if anybody saw his Vegas thing. I guess Vegas didn't dig him or it didn't work. He read of his book. That book goes like, it starts cool and then it just goes. It's Can like, what are you talking what? about now? Yeah. Which paragraph are we in? I've read in a couple of reviews where they say, oh, you know, this it tends to ramble. Tens. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. babes and it's funny and it's serious and we got ballads and we got we're on heightened alert it sounds like english but i ain't making much sense Whoa. i know you think i'm out of my mind but leave a message no holds barbecue um, i'm sure the first time picasso showed up somebody said hey both eyes are on one side of the head you got to correct that <laughs> Sammy Hagar's taken his own unconventional career path since splitting from Van Halen, a path that includes a lot of pit stops at his Cabo Wabo Cantina in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. It's my baby, and everyone thinks that, you know, it's part Van Halen and all that. There was a time when Van Halen was involved with it when I built it. I wanted to build a place where I could go sing and play with friends because they spent a lot of time down there, and I am a guy that sings and plays music. I'm a no chemicals or sugar in it, so I preserved it, so therefore you don't get a hangover. You don't get a headache. Do you? It was completely rebellion against Van Halen. It was like, uh, I'm just gonna write songs that I couldn't do in Van Halen. is the epitome of who and what I am today. I'm very proud of this record. 
February 2002, Sammy Hagar's phone rings. On the other end is David Lee Roth with a proposition, a Roth-Hagar co-headlining tour. Ironically, Sammy is hanging out with Van Halen bassist Michael Anthony at the time. And Mike goes, you gonna do it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down and check it out, you know, and have a meet. I told Dave's guy, you know, Dave and I gotta meet, make sure we get along good enough, you know, I don't wanna go out and have to yell and scream at you know, each other all night. It was my idea a long time ago, and Dave wouldn't even talk about it. When I, when I left Van Halen, the first thing I said was, call up David Lee Ross' agent and see if he wants to go out on tour with me. I said, it'd be the coolest thing ever, you know, and he, Dave wouldn't even, like, <laughs> slam the phone down, right? He walked in, and we shook hands and said, whatever's been said, you know, forget it. We take it from here. We know you all love a good scandal, and that's why you're here today, ladies and gentlemen. This is a pretty competitive tour in my book. I think I'm going to do the, you know, try my best to do the best show I've ever done in my life every night, and I'm sure Dave's going to do that times 10 as well. And I think it's going to make for great entertainment for the fans that come. They're going to see probably the best of us ever. And like Dave said, with all those hits, I, I just can't imagine walking away uh, disappointed. In terms of what you see on the on the deck up there, there's a rivalry in between us. The audience gets the absolute best out of both of us. It goes beyond just two guys. It goes beyond a list of songs. It goes beyond what the last band that we were in. It's a state of mind and it's a point of view. Perhaps it's a state of mind and point of view that Van Halen has misplaced twice. Sammy and I are like fraternity brothers who've been through the same hazing. You gotta love Dave, right? You gotta love him. You don't have to love him, but you must tolerate him today. Coming up, the sh hits the fan. He's going, you owe me more shows than Dave. I don't owe you anything, pal. Are you crazy? You owe me. Get you over know, it, bringing you out here, getting you back in the game, pal. Sam's always banging on the windshield. A bottle of tequila in one hand is in the other. <laughs> and a shot at immortality. Still to come on The Sammy and Dave Show, life after Van Halen. But I'm not friends. We're not going to lie. I am the voice of Van Halen. <laughs> In May of 2002, after more than a decade of animosity and a heap of trash talking, former Van Halen singers David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar did the unthinkable. They patched up their differences, packed their bags, and headed off on the road together. It was called the Sammy Hagar and David Lee Roth Tour 2002, song for song, the undisputed heavyweight chants of rock and roll, and it played to packed houses from coast to coast. But the real boxing match was going on backstage. Just last night, we got in a big fight, you know. He's going, you owe me more shows. I said, Dave, I don't owe you anything, pal. Are you crazy? You owe me. <laughs> Get over it, bringing you out here, getting you back in the game, pal. Run-ins and conflicts are par for the course in rock and roll. What's unorthodox here is that if you want to take a shot at the boss, hey, my hat and badges off, throw your best, homie. Every time I open, he gets in a bad mood. But it was his idea. I didn't want to open for anybody. But I said, sure, you want me to open there? We'll open every other show. Uh, you know, originally when we started this, I said to Sam, let's do, you know, 50-50. I'll flip a blonde and always call tails. And, you know, you can do the off nights. He didn't get it either. Dave doesn't do anything except walk out on stage and pretend like it's his show. He don't do the interviews, he doesn't try to sell tickets, and he doesn't jam, he doesn't want to go out, you know, on stage together and go, hey, you know, let's like show these people this is a great tour, you know, it's just like oil and water. Well, uh, there's an entrance, huh? <laughs> I don't really see that there's a whole lot of comparison. Sam throws a party, I am the party. <laughs> on this deal, on the dress rooms, because Dave and I are flip-flopping. One night he closes, the next night I close. One night he closes, the next night I close, right? Well, tonight he's closing. He's got the big dress room, and I'm pissed. I'm not an opening act. Look at this, look at the size of this. I got 
This little piddly ass room. Everybody feeling good about yourselves? Healthy? Yes. Happy? Yeah. yeah. Free. Sober? Close enough. Stay away from the Cabo Wabo. <laughs> <laughs> wow! obviously not in love with each other and that rivalry is precisely the kind of mix it up that an audience wants to get in the middle of we've been getting along worse than ever because you know once again he's being unreasonable this guy came out of the gutter to do this tour and it's now he's back so now he's playing in front of big crowds again and making a ton of money and and so now he's automatically acts like he's got again it's like okay Dave wait till the tour is over you're back where you were last year pal I'm sure the Benny Goodmans and the Glenn Millers slugged it out much in the same vein. As for the possibility of Sammy and Dave jamming on stage together, forget it. I told him from the first day we met, you come out on stage with me anytime. You can walk out in the middle of my show, and I won't freak. I'll make something happen. Most comparisons between Hagar's reality and mine are purely coincidental. I myself am the son of Satan, even though my duties here are largely ceremonial. Even when I go to Dave's dress room door, even like when he's right across the hall from me, he sees me, runs in there, locks the door. Where's Diamond? Is he around? And I go beat on the door. Dave, come on, open up. When he gets there, let me know. I'm going to go beat on his bus door. And he pretends like he's not in there. That's some weird stuff, man. Sam's always banging on the windshield. A bottle of tequila in one hand and his in the other. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Hagar and David Lee Roth. Ladies and gentlemen, David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar. It's really good to see you after 55 shows, Dave. It's really good to see you. Where you been all summer? Pal? I've been on the Celebrity Deathmatch Tour, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I don't need the money yet, Dave, no. I don't like Dave anymore. I thought maybe yeah. Dave and I get along. I don't like Dave. Well, let's define get along. Do we have each other's phone numbers? No. Do we share strong drink and reasonable historic stories with each other? No. I guess my answer is no. <laughs> What's rock and roll without a little drama, a little mix it up? Come on, you give peace a chance. I'm making a movie, like a rattle and hum. I'm going to do this completely myself, and we're using a lot of real film and stuff. I'm really trying to do it right. And uh, it's going to be called The Long Road to Cobble, and then do my whole birthday bash. Not for sale. It ain't about money and that. It's about being doing things that make you happy and that you'll be proud of you know, doing. Dave, meanwhile, is busy working on new music and video projects. Will that include a sequel to the infamous No Holds Barbecue? Only time will tell. Let's cut to the crash right here at Club Dave. <laughs> It's hard to say. I'm not looking for it by myself, so I don't know if we could ever do it. But ideally, which is always on the, the chopping block, is the Sam and Dave tour with Van Halen. I think that would be the only way to do it. Everybody's looking for something. Dave and I can get along. You can see we can do it. We just start to stay away from each other, and we've got to have a rule. Just say, look, here's what we're doing. You do your thing and do mine. You, know, you play an hour, I play an hour. You do this, I do that. I ride in that car, you ride in that car, you know? I ride in my jet, <laughs> you, you ride in your bus, because if you're in the air, I'm going to go in the bus. Hey, I'm an optimist. When I go fishing, I take a Nikon and a frying pan. You hope for the best, I expect it. Uh, maybe this reaches out to Eddie Van Heineken. Love you, baby. You know my number. 2003 marks the 25th anniversary of Van Halen's first album, which means the band is eligible for induction in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When that day arrives, will it bring the Van Halen reunion that their millions of fans have been praying for? It's hard to say, but hey, that's another show. Right here on VH1. Hi, I'm Liza. And I'm David. It's David. We've been practicing a long time for this day. You guys are killers, rapists, robbers. Is there a log is loud music? Oh, gnarly! I'm with the Goo Goo Dolls, and we're at the home of their number one fan. Oh, what we can do with this place. My favorite love song.